This hymn is a tremendous hymn as far as its uh, explanation of who God is. Obviously, the, the message is, is there. Uh, a true friend. Um, all our needs and sorrows bear. We bring it to, to the Lord in prayer. Uh, he cares. He sustains. I don't know about you, but how many times we fail to really realize what a friend we do have in the Lord. In the spring of 1844, the hills of Ireland were green. Clouds drifted across painted skies. And for a young Irishman, the future was filled with hope and promise. Joseph Scriven had completed his university education and returned to his home outside of Dublin. He was engaged to his childhood love and soon planned to take her hand in marriage. On the day before their wedding, Scriven's fiance rode out to meet him along the banks of the River Bond. In a terrifying instant, her horse was startled and she was thrown headfirst into the rushing waters. Knocked unconscious by the fall, she drowned moments before Scriven arrived. And they were taking the body out of the water and he was close enough to look, and he looked into the face of the girl that he was supposed to marry the next day. As he said later, he said, the bottom of my world seemed to just disappear. And he said, no, wherever I looked after that in Ireland, I always was reminded of the wonderful day I had looked forward to that never had occurred. Emotionally shattered by the death of his love, Joseph Scriven turned to God for consolation and guidance. He decided to leave Ireland, and in 1845, he arrived in Ontario, Canada, where he would spend the rest of his life. Scriven settled near the town of Port Hope on the shores of Lake Ontario. There he committed himself to the ideals of Christ's Sermon on the Mount, devoting his life to helping others in need. Each day he walked these roads assisting widows, the sick and the poor. It was said that he never once denied a request for help and that his greatest desire was to reflect the love of God through his life. For nearly 40 years, Joseph Scriven was a living light of charity and faith in this small Canadian town. And for his acts of kindness, he came to be known as the Good Samaritan of Port Hope. So he devoted his life to love and good deeds for the people of his community there. And they saw him walking down the street carrying a sawhorse and a saw. And someone in the community said, well, there's Joseph Scriven. Uh, he's willing to saw wood for anyone. And this particular individual said, boy, I'd like to hire him to do it for me. I, I'd love to find a sober young man to cut wood for me and this individual responded well you won't get Joseph Scriven because he only helps the people who cannot pay or have no resources for which to uh, reimburse you so he really did want to help people out of the goodness of his heart because of God's grace
Joseph Scriven spent many years tutoring the children of Robert Pengelly, a retired British sea captain. It was in this house that he met and fell in love with Pengelly's niece, Eliza Roche. They were to be married in the spring of 1854. Yet only weeks before their wedding, tragedy struck Striven's life for a second time. Eliza Roche became ill with pneumonia. Despite Joseph's vigilant care, she died at the age of 23. Once again, Scriven was heartbroken by the loss of a woman he loved. And once again, he found strength by turning to a God he looked upon as his closest friend. The following year, he wrote a poem to his mother in Ireland. His words described this extraordinary friendship that had given him purpose and hope in the face of devastating pain. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. In simple yet eloquent language, Joseph Scriven, a man well acquainted with sorrow and loneliness, had defined for the world the essence of a right relationship with God. He saw his creator not as an impersonal force to be feared, but as a loving father and friend whose greatest desire is to carry our burdens and ease our pain. For the rest of his life, Scriven would continue to demonstrate his faith throughout Port Hope. And today, more than a century after his death, his profound insights into the true character of God still resound through the legacy of a timeless hymn. Joseph Scriven's poem was first published anonymously. Nearly a decade passed before Scriven revealed to a neighbor and to the rest of the world that he and the Lord had written it together. Today, what a friend we have in Jesus stands among the most beloved hymns ever penned. And outside of Port Hope, a monument commemorates the life and work of a humble, yet remarkable man who trusted God with the deepest burdens of his life and walked with him as his friend.